Hey everybody, welcome to the Master of Passive Income Show. I'm Dustin Heiner and I'm here to help you learn how to quit that J-O-B, that just overbooked job, by investing in real estate rental property so you never ever have to work a job again. Today we're gonna be looking at Avail, avail avail.co, that's the company, and I have Nate Smoyer on, who's gonna show us how, like all the great things about Avail that's gonna help us in our real estate investing. Nate, thank you so much for being on the show. Dustin, thanks for having me. I love your t-shirt, Successfully Unemployed. I often describe myself as barely employable. So I totally relate and love it. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I love the idea of being able to figure out a way to not work for somebody else. That's why we invest in real estate. Okay. So Nate, now you work at Avail and I mean, what's your position there? And let's transition from that into, let's see how amazing Avail is. Yeah, totally. So director of marketing, been leading our marketing team now for a little over two years. Uh, 13 of us on staff, along with a few contract agencies and freelancers, uh, hard at work trying to build out the best we can. You know, and of course, on my side, I have two residential units uh, that I keep in Washington State. I manage myself using Avail uh, while I live in Chicago. And as addition, I have some self storage up in Wisconsin. So I'm an active user, active investor. Uh, so I'm in the trenches just with all of you guys. So hopefully something I will share here will be of value and you guys will see why this can help your business. That's great. Now, give me a, just, just tell me in a big, broad overview, what Avail does, because we're definitely going to go into it. I literally see you're going to share the screen. So everybody, if you're listening to this on the podcast, uh, you go and watch the video too, because he's literally going to show us. But give us a big, broad, like a 30,000 foot level of what Avail does. Yeah. So, I mean, we cater to the DIY landlord. So that's anybody who owns and operates their own rental units. And we've identified there's about eight to nine million of these DIY landlords in the United States who own and operate roughly 24 million rental units. So that's, if you break it out to averages, about three units per individual DIY landlord. And we find that's a pretty common range, but really up to that 10 unit mark is the perfect landlord who's going to find the most value out of Avail. Practically speaking, we provide the system tools and education required to actually efficiently and effectively you know, operate a rentals business. There's a lot of things that are happening. There's a lot of timelines. There's a lot of details to remember, a lot of things to keep in order. And you know, it's easy if you had one unit just to keep that one thing in place. The moment you add a second unit, things start to, okay, I've got to remember two. And you may have you know, between two units, four tenants. And one of them wants to move out and sublet their room. So now you've got this additional thing. And you know, one of them with the other unit has a co-signer. You immediately start seeing that some things start changing and you've got to keep track of you know, when they're moving out or checklists or your leasing documents. And of course, uh, let's not forget collecting rent. And did you collect rent this month? And where is it? And did it get lost in the mail? Again, uh, or, you know, that, that sort of thing. So ideally, a veil then takes a lot of the guesswork out of that. And so when you think about it, as far as like systems, we've built a veil with the DIY landlord in mind, as mentioned I'm on one, both our co-founders uh, own and operate their own rental properties, you know, here and around the Chicago area, as well as we have several others, both on the marketing and product team. So we're constantly getting into the mind, both our own, but also talking to our customers of what are the real systems and processes that a DIY landlord should be considering and then building that into the product so that we help you and guide you along the way, whether you're, you know, first year, you've got your first property or your seasoned vet and you just need something that takes you know, some time, you know, give, or gives you some of your time back in your day. Now, I know that as we are managing our own properties, we have a lot of things, everything from collecting rent to getting maintenance and all that sort of stuff. Now, walk us through how Avail actually works so we can actually see the screenshots and everything of how it actually works. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll share my screen here. I'll do the best I can on, on demoing. I'm no Billy Mays, but uh, <laughs> I'll try and hit you. I've, I've been working on my one-liner. So, um, you know, it, uh, avail.co is, is the website. Uh, there's, there's no cost to sign up. There's no credit card. There's no contracts. There's no commitment. So th- at the very least, there is no barriers or reasons to not take a look and give it a shot. You'll never be asked to commit to anything long term. And if you ever don't like it or it doesn't meet your needs, you just simply close it out and you never log back in. You're all good. Um, once you create your account, though, you know, you'll find your way to this screen. Now, the actual first step is we'll ask you, hey, what's your first unit? Again, we talk about like those DIY landlords that don't tend to have 20 buildings, right? We have a handful of units. So we'll ask you the first one just to get you started here. You'll see I've entered one in at the top here, 900 North Franklin Street. That happens to be the Avail address here in Chicago. So 
it's not my own personal rental. You know, it's just a big commercial building. But today I've entered it in as a single family home. Uh, one of the most, you know, right now, especially a, a hot commodity that people have been looking for. But you can see this, you know, all, right on the, the immediate here is your dashboard. And there's quite a few things happening here that, you know, we're trying to give you some updates and make sure you're uh, aware of what's happening. Now, I've got this account. This is our staging account. So this is, you know, some things are not totally in place, but I'm going to walk you through like some of the processes you'd probably go through. I'm going to jump to our, our listings feature. Now you can see here currently uh, we're off we're off market. And this is, uh, I'll go into the Zillow thing a little bit later here, but you know, we're, we're not on the market, but if we were, we would be able to see, you know, showing availability slots. We could plug that in uh, number of leads we've gotten off this listing. So you want to know like, Hey, is my listing working? Like, especially in this market. Look, if you're not getting leads, something's broken. It's not live anywhere. Your photos don't look good. Your description's terrible. Some will, or it's priced too high because in this market, it goes on, it goes off. And that's how it, you know, a lot of people have been sharing it. And I've had actually experienced myself. You know, you see, we built in some sharing features here and all that, but um, I want to, I want to jump ahead a little bit and I've already pre-built this. So I've actually, um, you know, if we were to click uh, building a listing, which would be here. So it says finish because I've started and I've started this, this listing here. It's really simple, simple inputs, right? So we've got a three, two, 1800 square foot parking. Uh, we'll do a, a parking spot. Your terms really simple. Like you're getting ahead, right? You're, you're making sure that people know what you want. Hey, you want a, a security deposit? We can put that security deposit in. You do one year, two year uh, move-in fees if you wish. I don't do move-in fees um, for my rental units. Uh, you can you know, specify whether you want pets or not. These are some high level items. Now, as you can see here, I should actually put pets allowed, right? And we'll do small dogs because I, I've got the most adorable little dog. I just plugged in a quick photo of, of my pup here. It's Mr. Fox. Um, but you want to max out your photo space. I don't have a ton of photos of our office, so I didn't plug those in, but you can put in, you know, 30 some photos if you want. And the research shows at least six photos is going to get you that many more listings. So, or leads on your listing. So you really want to maximize what you're doing here. Um, and we make it really easy if you want to move your photos around so that the first photo is your featured photo. So that nice outside shot with the light shining or something like that, that really makes the house pop and look good. Do you want to put that as your, your hero image? Adding amenities, super easy. Just click what you want. Um, you want to add something in here, custom. I've added in the gym, right? Custom amenity is the gym. And we'll, we'll show you where that, you know, that pops up on your listing detail page. In our utilities, uh, any utilities that are included with the house, contact info. So this is just our support line here. So if you guys are watching this, want to prank call me, sorry. You know, just <laughs> our support team, you know, but go for it. Give us a call. All right. Now I saved this one because I wanted to show you guys how this works in real time. I hope this doesn't fail me. Sometimes, you know, the, the listing description, I think it's overlooked and I've seen it happen, right? People just put house for rent or they put apartment for rent. They're not thinking through what the consumer's thinking through. The consumer's thinking through, like they have a specific thing they're looking for in mind. And if you think more like the renter, you're going to attract the renter you're looking for. And so um, we've thought through this quite a bit. And you saw that I just one click auto suggested the title and three bedroom, two bathroom house in Chicago with great amenities, right? Auto suggest description. And we just built that, boom, done. And I it love that. Exactly everything, everything that you needed to think through. Look, you're busy. You've got a full-time job. You've got family. You've got things going on. Sometimes it's hard to remember the details. Again, systems, tools, and education. That's what avails really providing that goes over the top and thinking through what does, you know, what do you need as a landlord? I hate having to come up with the title and description. So I love that. It actually a click button to do that. You know, and last but not least is showings. Look, we've all been there. You get the lead and they say, can you show the house Friday? No, I can't. I've got time Monday and Tuesday after work. And they say, well, I have band practice on Mondays and Tuesdays, right? So you're going back and forth. And the reality is that could actually be a good tenant. So now you're like, okay, do I, do I skip work? Do I skip my daughter's recital, right? Do I, or, or do I tell them tough luck? Well, we can just avoid that. There's, there's no reason to have to go back and forth like that. So what we can do is we just add in, you know, I'm doing Friday and I have uh, 2 p.m. available until 5 p.m. Right. And I'll do like that. And then I'll save this and 20 minute time slots, email tenant, a reminder, the morning of the showing text time, tenant, a reminder one hour before the showing. Boom. So now tenants, when they inquire, they can select a showing time. So you take that again, giving you time back that back and forth on setting showings, super easy. This is all part of avail unlimited, which is free.
So this is all baked in out the shelf. Again, no credit card. You get all that ready to roll. And if we continue, we'd move to review and publish our listing. So pretty ki killer, uh, I think, features on, on the listing side. The next thing is though, you're gonna, you're gonna move into applications and screenings. Maybe you did an open house. Um, sometimes I would do like uh, collect a few leads. Cool, I'll, do, I'll be at the house between two and four on Saturday. Come on through. And so I'll let people tour you know, and I'll do it in one time slot. They can come at the same time. They come at different times. It's totally fine by me. Uh, I get a chance to meet them, get to know them, show the house, and then offer up applications to those who meet pre-screening criteria. And so you can do the same. And so you can request applications from those names and emails you collect in person or it, through, through email. So it, if you had already collected a lead from your listing, you'd have a lead in here and you can request it automatically. Now I've already set up a few tenants here that I wanted to go through and uh, show you here. So if I was uh, requesting an application, once I've requested that, you have a status on those tenants. So this would be the status of one of my tenants. Now, you can see here currently it's, it's incomplete, right? We've requested these reports and you could see where it was at here. And I'll just actually just go through this so you can see some of the options. You can put a little message in like, hey, good to see you at the open house. And then we can go ahead and edit the application. We by default ask for five years of residence history. You can change it to one, you can change it to three, whatever you want. Reference checks from prior landlords, this is important. And I had this discussion with someone recently. They said, I'm hearing stories of tenants saying that their landlord is selling and that's why they're moving. And I don't trust that. But great. Collect the landlord reference, call the previous landlord, validate that story. Don't write that tenant off. They actually really could be telling you the truth, but collect those references and do your due diligence. We will email those landlords, but you can also call them. We ask for work history, right? Of course, get some uh, income verification documents, request that. They can upload that on the tenant side automatically. So on your side, you'll see a, you know, a, a PDF or a JPEG of that document that they uploaded. So it's seamless back and forth. Don't have to collect it in person. Don't have to arrange meeting at a gas station to get docs. And then it's some standard questions. This is important because some of you may know in some markets, you can't ask some of these questions. So you might not be able to ask them if they've been convicted of a felony or include that in the initial screening. Uh, I think Seattle has some specific restrictions on how you can and cannot leverage criminal history. And so you may need to remove that from the overall reports as well. It's literally just click in a checkbox to add or remove those options so that you stay compliant, you know, but you also get everything you need in screening a tenant. And of course, last but not least, who pays the fees? The screening fees is on the tenant. You don't have to worry about collecting money. You don't have to worry about a payment processor. It's all automatic. The reports are instant. There's no waiting 30 hours or whatever some places do for, for sending back your report. It's immediate. So as soon as they run it, you get the report in your inbox. I wanted to show here, I did screenshot and pulled up that save this. This is what the tenant sees on the uh, request for application. So they get this request for application requests. You've been invited. They'll see the address. They can click here to get started. That confirms the address, right? We tell them exactly like, hey, you can trust the service. This is valid. Uh, one little thing I know people get concerned about, but this application's shareable. Once they pay for that, they can share that to other landlords for whatever reason, if it doesn't work out with you, your tenant can still use that application. So I know it's a, it, it's hard to ask some people to, to apply for places. And I know, and I appreciate those who are cost conscious for the tenant. And so we think this is a good feature that you can reshare those applications, you know, to other landlords uh, from them. So um, that's, a, that's a really, I think, a, a high level review of the applications of how they work, a really dead simple, um, simple to edit and, and to navigate. Um, you can see that we just walk you through all the options of what you would need to, to get the information from tenants. That's great. And I love the fact that we're able to um, find tenants in many different ways. Because I remember the very first screen, it showed like, I don't know, at least 10 different websites or services that actually you can list all your properties on or it will for you, which is terrific because you never know what somebody's going to be using. I'm not able to use Zillow. I mean, I've never heard of Zumper before, but hey, some people might have, and that might be the best place to go. And so it propagates to all of them. Now, once we have a tenant, let's say we, we put them in there, it, does it also take care of like the collecting of rents and maintenance and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, so great question. So, I mean, that moves on to our next, next feature naturally, which is lease agreements. Uh, so the, building out a lease, there's a handful of ways you do it. Now, 
we know that uh, a lot of landlords have either gone to a lawyer or they go to some sort of like local association. And then even worse, though, some of them go to Staples, right, and get their lease agreements. <laughs> Please don't do the last piece, right? But totally understand there's a lot of different needs for this. And I'm really excited. And it, we haven't told anyone about this publicly yet. This is coming out. This is first time announcement. We have some awesome updates coming to our leasing feature, including the ability to upload your own lease and apply digital signature. That is coming very That's great. soon. So I don't know when this video is going to drop, but maybe it's live by then. Probably not that quite that soon, but it's coming soon. But currently we make it really easy for you to build your lease. Okay. So if you're managing your lease agreements, you know, you would have here uh, any leases. Now I have set up some samples. If you were using your own lease, it would read external lease. You can see that nice little tag. And if you're using a lease within a veil, it would not see that tag. Um, here you can see I've actually started a lease. So if I were creating a new lease, it would move us to the screen. And again, very similar like the leasing or the listings feature. It just walks you through simply how to set up the terms for your lease, right? All of your, your options here, right? If they're moving in on the 15th and you're not sure how to prorate the rent, boom, easy peasy. We make that nice, easy for you. All your pet rules, uh, whether or not you allow smoking. Um, this one is a really sensible one that I think makes a ton of sense. If a lot of people like to move to month to month and that gives them flexibility, gives the tenant flexibility, it's a checkbox, adds that to the lease. And now it's a mutually agreed upon term of the lease agreement. All your clauses, this is all baked in, avail unlimited. So that no cost, all baked in. I love that, that little edit button. That's terrific. Now I'll talk about the editing here. That is part of what we call unlimited plus. And so the unlimited plus, if I were to make some rules, say to our clauses here, which I, I do add some, so I, I use unlimited plus, I add in custom rules around pets. I don't dislike pets, but I see pets as a way to maximize returns and also target very responsible tenants. So I charge a deposit, I charge a non-refundable fee, which is the cleaning, and then I charge rent because there's additional maintenance and wear and tear. And so I'll add all those clauses in here. But if we were to go and uh, say, make some changes here, you'll see here that we, we introduced Unlimited Plus. Uh, Unlimited Plus is just five bucks per month per unit. Uh, so this gets you the ability to customize lease agreement clauses, rules, clone lease agreements. So if you have four units, it'll clone across all four. So you're using the same applications, lease agreements, all of your same rules and or, uh, all that. There is a, a wave of, ACH fees for tenants when they make payments. And we can get into that a little bit. Uh, our fast pay product means that you can get your rent as fast as next day. So as long as your bank account, the tenant's bank account are uh, eligible for that, then you can get your rent at that much faster. That's great. I have some property managers that still send checks. I'm like, oh, I got to wait for the check to come in. All right, fine. <laughs> and then, you know, last but not least, you know, we provide a marketing website. You talked about, right? So for those who really want, look, this is a business, right? Do you go to the store down the street with lights that are burned out? Or do you go to the store down the street that has good, clean windows and a door that functions and you walk in and it's bright and friendly? But renters are no different. They're looking at this as that is the place they're going to spend their time the very first piece of your property that they experience is online. So delivering a professional experience, if it costs you five bucks a month, can net you on the back end, easy 10X that, which I know is only 50 bucks, but we're talking about sometimes marginal differences throughout the year make up and add to that overall return on investment for us. So if you want to charge a higher rate to attract tenants who are willing to pay more for quality, it, it starts online. It starts on how you you present your business. So the unlimited plan is $5 a month? Unlimited is free. Or unlimited plus, I mean. plus, five bucks per month per unit. Yep. And like you could see, it's also waiving $2.50. I mean, that's half of it. Obviously, it's not necessary. I mean, because I usually charge my, or have the system charge my tenants, but that's also another bonus for them. That's another another really nice thing. So that even if you wanted to, you know, still charge $2.50, so that would cut your price off of this. But if you have just, you know, five properties, it seems like it's easy to pay for itself. Yeah, it's only going to pay for itself. And, you know, honestly, if the cost is really your concern, you, you bake the five bucks into your rent and mm -hmm. no one will bat an eye. Uh, and so I, I think you'll get a better experience. And not only, not only that, you know, if you look at the big picture. If your tenant gets a better experience on the front end, 
they feel better about you. They trust you. They're like, wow, this actually really worked compared to what the property manager delivered to them or the previous landlord, which you know made them sign awkward paperwork or like send their social security card and email unsecured, which you should never do, right? Then they're immediately going to have a better starting with you. And look, I don't, you don't need me to tell you this. Go to Google and type in landlords are and type in la- tenants are, right? There's already so much animosity between both sides. That's not a great way to protect an investment. Protecting your investment and securing your investment, if both sides are on the same page and both sides are feeling better about it, you're probably going to make more money in the long run. And so this is just an easy way to, to make that, that effort you know, towards improving the relationship on both sides. That's great. Yeah. So, it, I mean, it seems like it's a really... Uh... Pretty much a no-brainer, but you also have the the free, the free unlimited that without it. So you can definitely check it out. Now, what about like maintenance calls or anything else that, you know, as we're running the property, how do we make sure we handle that stuff? Yeah. So your, your tenants can submit maintenance tickets directly from their side of the platform. Uh, now you can submit one or they can submit one. But the cool thing is either way, now you have a paper record. So at the end of the year, when you're trying to reconcile your books, you're like, what did I fix this year? <laughs> You'll have that. Uh, but also keep some communication between you and your tenants. So, you know, for instance, uh, tomorrow, actually, I've got a plumber going to one of our units. Uh, the toilet's just not draining quick enough. I'm like, okay, well, we'll get someone out for you. And so I can send info of like who the plumber is, the phone number, or that sort of thing, at the date, time of when they're showing up. That's given notice that someone's going to be coming by. And they, they all get an email. So there's four tenants in the house. They all get an email notification of what's happening. So it's a fast way to get everything across the board. Um, and, you know, I don't know about those who have more than one unit, especially if you have more than one tenant per unit, keeping track of names. <laughs> Sometimes can be, a, I just can't remember, uh, you know, names. I'm just not a names guy. I'm, I'm even worse with faces. So, you know, it's helpful to me when I know exactly which tenant to which unit. And instead of having to go gather up email addresses, you know, I can just submit something like this. And so I can go in and say, you know, uh, uh, we have some, uh, so I don't know, some paint issues, right? And uh, repainting the dining room, right? And please let painter in at 3 p.m. on Friday. And you can see here, right? Email tenants about this ticket. If I was doing an on site inspection, uh, which I, we did that this summer on both our units. And I would add photos of the things that we plan on repairing or when that is. And now we've got a ticket. And so that, that way everyone's in the loop on what's happening. That's great. Now, I know people are going to be thinking about what about tracking our own expenses? Because we get the income. Does this have the option to, like we have an expense on each property, we can actually put in the expense, like you know, enter a seat or even take a picture. So we have that all in one spot. Yeah, that's a really great question. I mean, so- the, the one thing we didn't cover yet was the, uh, the payments here. And I'll, I'll first start with that. So your income expenses, both sides here. So we, we help you track all of your income first off. Uh, so if you were setting up your, your rent charges here, you know, it's as simple as how much lease and lease end date. Now this is, um, if you were doing a, a lease from within a veil, it would naturally transition you to this feature. So you wouldn't have to go set it up manually. If you're using your own lease agreement, that's totally fine. And then you can set up your charges this way. Even if you're taking cash for rent, okay, or maybe rent vouchers or some other method, you can still use the veil to track rent received. And that way you're not ever having to guess, did you get it? Or, you know, you're keeping clean books at the end of the year, at least to submit. Um, I know not all of us set, keep separate bank accounts. And so sometimes that stuff gets a little messy. So this is a great way to, to do that. Uh, you can see here, really simple. Uh, we'd add in a, enter in our info. It gives us all of our future charges. If you wanted to edit one specifically, maybe you're doing a credit, um, you know, you have several different types, late fee, fee, rent, that sort of thing, all baked in. And if I skipped over to here, I meant to show this, you know, we have, you can customize any of these fees, but even better is this one, the late fee. A lot of people are afraid to enforce the late fee and you feel like a jerk or you don't want to do it and you don't know how to have the conversation. The reality here is this, the system bills you a late fee. If it's more than five days afterwards, that is how our system works. It is important to be fair to all tenants. And if you're going to enforce on one, you need to enforce on all. And this takes some of that weight off. I've never had any pushback on the late fee because it's how the system works. And it's a great way to ensure, not that you're collecting late fees. It's to ensure that we keep people motivated to pay on time. 
Yep. Uh, and then from there, you invite your tenants. So I, I want to cover what you, you talked about here, which was, you know, what about the reporting side? So we have a handful of reports that you can see here. There's quite a few. Obviously, depending on your specific needs, you're going to want to download different reports here. If you, you know, say you have 30 units, you're probably going to have quite a few listings at any given time. You may also have some investors that you need to send your quarterly reports to and maybe, you know, earnouts and that sort of thing. And so some of these reports would really be important for that. Um, uh, let's see what happens here because I don't have, yeah, there's not any published listings. So you can see we have that. So I don't have any completed, but it would, uh, you could view those reports. And then there's also these reports down here. Very simple ones. What's our rent rolls? Uh, end of the year. What's, our, what's my received payments? Now I don't have anything to show for received payments, but it's going to email me that automatically. And so that'll come through as a CSV, as a spreadsheet. You can see here the general layout of what that looks like, as well as your late payments or overall tenant roster. So if you are entering in to selling the property, maybe you're going to 1031 from single family up to a four unit or something along those lines, these reports, these are the things that you're going to want to show when you sell the property that, hey, this is a good property. It performs. We've got the documentation to prove that because you've been tracking it over time versus oh, shoot, let me find that paper ledger I kept or these bank records and piece things together. This will really save you a lot of time. We are working towards an income uh, ex, uh, input and expense input feature. So you will be able to, at some point, be able to start entering in those pieces because the expense pieces is right now. That's the one thing that we know our customers are looking for. How do they better track that? So that is, that's a thing that's coming soon. We'll see the leasing features come before the uh, accounting expenses. Um, hopefully that'll still be this year on the accounting expense side. Yeah, it seems like the expenses is just a small piece that's missing out because as we're you know we're putting out a, an actual good report, you want to see it would be great to have a profit and loss or you know income expenses just so that we have that in there all in one place rather than getting something like other, you can pay other software companies um, to have them actually put on expenses and stuff like that. Now, I know there's uh, one company that I could think of that they specifically do all accounting for all properties and stuff like that. Not necessarily managing and all that sort of stuff, but it's it's for, you know, to help you manage your money. And so that would be another really, really good benefit, I think, if you ha were able to add all your expenses in for each specific property. And just at the end of the year, boom, you pull out your entire st statement, give it to your accountant, and they just take care of the taxes. Yeah, one of the things we do right now, and we've been seeing it take off, we have our own community forums, you know, community.avail.co. People can go there and we have a tag for product suggestions. And we've seen a, a huge amount of influx of this recently. And it's not because everything's breaking, it's because we listen and we will respond back. I don't know how many other companies you can immediately, you know, type in a, uh, you can type in a, a thread and get like the head of marketing or head of product or, you know, our community manager to respond back to you, acknowledge what it is and tell you where we're going with that suggestion. And we really take that stuff personally. And not personally isn't like we get butthurt about it. It's like, hey, look, this is our customer. This is their direct needs. Going back to, if you're going to build the systems, tools, and education for landlords, you got to know what what their needs are, where their pains are and desires are. And so we, we look at that feedback a lot and then take that and apply that to our product roadmap of like, hey, we're seeing this theme. We need to build a better thing to handle this problem. Yeah, it seems like Avail definitely has the majority of everything that we're going to need. And I love the fact that we can actually have document signing in there and it already has the lease already all prepared because that's just irritating taking a you know a, a screenshot or not screenshot uh, scanning in a lease having them you know sign it and then scan it back it's just irritating it'd be great to that now is there anything else we might have missed is there anything we might like maybe on the roadmap of things you're going to be putting in there as well that we should look at before we actually uh, uh you know sign off here today yeah i mean the one thing i would say is for everyone who's looking at a veil look thanks for even considering us, right? I mean, you know, we're honored by that. And again, I mentioned we take your feedback and suggestions personally, and we really do. And it, as well as anyone who chooses to use the product, um, you know, we offer up a ton of education on our blog. So I, if you're even wary, like you look, I got a system in place that everything's working great. I would encourage you to get on our newsletter. Um, we do a lot of in-depth research we're constantly talking to other landlords and tenants and then reporting back those results. A lot of how-to tutorials and educational pieces. And if, you know, at some point you, you're looking for either a new system or to replace your old way of doing things or just looking to simply improve your business, you know, check out avail.co 
Uh, there's again, no cost, no credit card, no contracts. You get started with no commitments and we guarantee anything that you do. Like you're, you're going to be, you're going to be stoked on it. And if you're not, you just send us an email and we, we take care of it. That's great. Nate, man, you give us so much great insights and hopefully people will see the value of using Avail. And plus you have the, the free version as well as you get a little more great benefit and just $5 a month. I mean, people pay more for watching videos or, you know, watching movies online. So Nate, thank you so much for coming on and sharing everything about Avail. You bet. It was my pleasure. Loved it. I had a great time. If you want to check out Avail, check out the link in the description. Um, you'll definitely have a link right to there. You'll sh- it'll actually be, it's an affiliate link. You're going to be showing that you're a part of Master Passive Income. So I'd appreciate if you guys, you know, help me out there. But dude, just check out the link in the description and go ahead and start using Avail. All right, guys. We'll see you next time.